What's going on, y'all? Today we got setting the record straight about Michael Jordan's Wizards years. Let's get into it. Make sure y'all subscribe too, man. I don't, I don't say that enough. Make sure you subscribe, please, please. Man, help me Nearly five years ago, I made a video, video called Michael Jordan's Underrated Years with the Wizards. This was actually one well. of the few videos that really took off with the algorithm and launched my channel forward. As of this day, this video has 2.1 million views. I'm just to say that I might do the same thing for me. Shout out to Mike for that. Word up. You know what I'm saying? Got my channel. You know what I'm saying? Up and running. Cool, man. Launched my channel forward. As of this day, this video <laughs> has 2.1 million views and is one of the most viewed videos on the internet covering the topic of Michael Jordan in a wizard's uniform. So as you can imagine, a lot of fellow content creators saw this video. I believe one of them was fellow basketball YouTuber Clayton Crowley. Let me be clear, I freaking love Clayton's channel. It's another great channel if you're looking for basketball history lessons, and his GOAT series especially impressed me. He's close to 100,000 subscribers, and if some of my audience could help him get there, I would love to see that. Now with all of this being said, I freaking hate YouTube drama. I just don't enjoy engaging in silly disputes on the internet. But here's the thing, if I'm gonna be called out on something that includes information that isn't completely accurate, you best believe I'm gonna respond to that. Clayton made a video called Michael Jordan was a failure as a Washington wizard. And of course, considering how I like his channel, and considering the topic, I'm gonna watch that. As you can figure, okay. I found the one video on his channel that I wasn't a fan of. Now nowhere in the video does he directly call me out. But come on, I'm not stupid. The video starts by mocking the notion that Wizards MJ was underrated. Take a listen. MJ's years as a wizard are MJ underrated. MJ was actually really good as a wizard. Still getting buckets. People need to talk more about how good MJ was with the wizards. No, we don't. If you've been around basketball circles for a while now, you've certainly heard or seen things like this. Bad chemistry, a losing record, an organizational dysfunction that led to Jordan getting fired. Yeah, that sounds underrated to me. Not only is the video continuously mocking the title of my past video, but he's also being <laughs> condescending boy, while doing it. Boy, pre like that. He's throwing shots, he's throwing He indirectly implies that I'm dumb. His exact points in the uh. video seem to be direct responses to my points. And he closes his video by stating that MJ's wizard's ears do absolutely nothing to support his goat argument, which is the complete opposite of the point I made to close my video. Not gonna lie, I was feeling pretty called out. I wasn't annoyed that someone decided to disagree with me, but I was annoyed that someone decided to mock me for something that they clearly lacked the context of. Today, I'm providing my response. Now some people imply that defending Michael Jordan's wizard's ears is something that only Jordan stands do. And I can't stand that narrative because for one, I'm not a Michael Jordan fan. You know what my favorite part about Jordan's wizard stint was? It was when Kobe Bryant dropped 55 on his old ass. Why? Because I'm a Kobe fan. With mm. that being said, I watched many of the Wizards games those seasons, and I was following closely the inner workings of the organization. If LeBron James retired today and returned to basketball a few years later, trust me, you all would be paying attention, whether you like him or not. So it's not like I'm just some guy who's glazing over Jordan's numbers in hindsight. No, I watched those seasons closely because I'm old enough to have done that. Now let's take a look at Jordan's two seasons in Washington at a surface level. This was the numbers he put up in the 2002 season and in the 2003 season. And these were the records that his teams finished with. Now by simply looking at these results without knowing any of the further details, you could draw some harsh conclusions about Jordan's time in Washington. Here's yet another clip from Clayton's video. The Wizards improved by 18 games when Jordan joined the Wizards and finished a sterling 37 and 45 and missed the playoffs. And sure, he got injured and missed the end of the season, but even if they'd finished at the 500 rate they were winning at when he was healthy, they would have still missed the playoffs. Wow. So immediately, this statement is objectively incorrect in several ways. 
and it blows my mind how many people don't know these details about Michael Jordan's season. The Wizards were not winning at a 500 rate and on track to miss the playoffs when Jordan was healthy. Not even close. This was the play where Jordan sustained the injury that would end his season. This accident occurred on February 7th, 2002, and it okay. tore Michael Jordan's meniscus. The thing is, this wasn't the last game he played that season, as Michael Jordan was actually so crazy that he played another 14 games with a torn meniscus before he shut his season down to have surgery. Because Michael was so stubborn and decided to play another 14 games with a torn meniscus, he actually tanked his averages that season, as he was only a limping shell of what he was before the injury. These were Jordan's averages before the meniscus tear, and these were his averages afterwards. As you can see, they're not even close to being the same player, yet people lump it all together as if he was healthy until he played his final game that season. Like I said, when Jordan tore his meniscus, the Wizards were not on a 500 pace, but they actually had a 26-21 record, and mm. were sitting in the 5th spot in the Eastern Conference, comfortably on their way to the NBA playoffs. Sheesh. If the Wizards had continued their 26-21 rate, they would have finished with 45 wins on the season. That's not just a great improvement over the previous season, but statistically, that would have been one of the top 10 greatest season-to-season -season improvements that the league has ever seen, which was under the leadership of a 38-year-old player fresh out of retirement. Even that doesn't tell the whole story either. The Wizards started that season with a 2-9 record, as the chemistry adjustments were massive due to the new acquisition of Michael Jordan and due to the new head coaching of Doug Collins. With that being said, the Wizards were getting better as the season went along, and saying that they were starting to hit their stride would be a massive understatement. Richard Hamilton was the Wizards' second best player that season, but he had been frequently on and off the court due to injuries. Once he had become more available, Washington was rolling. In the last 15 games leading up to the injury, where both Jordan and Hamilton played, the Wizards were on a 15-1 streak, I repeat, they were on a 15-1 and one streak when both of these guys played leading up to the injury. Not only were they conservatively and statistically on their way to 45 wins, but based on their momentum, they were on their way to much more. Now in the video, Clayton scoffs at the idea of Michael being considered as one of the best players in the game at the time. If you feel that way too, consider this. Between these dates and the final 10 games leading up to his injury, Jordan put up these averages. Here are his averages compared to the other best perimeter players in the league during those same dates. This wasn't empty stats. The Wizards were in the heat of a playoff race and went 7-3 over those 10 games. And before you even think about suggesting it, that stretch wasn't against weak competition either, as 6 out of those 10 games were against playoff teams. Jordan wasn't only playing great at the time he tore his meniscus, but he was legitimately playing on the same level as the best perimeter players in the league, if not better. Here's another clip from Clayton's video, but this time looking at it from a different angle. And yeah, the Wizards improved defensively, but to cite a single player, even Michael Jordan, as the sole reason for that improvement is a gross oversimplification that borders on irresponsible. Defense in basketball is one of the hardest metrics to quantify, even today, and one player can only have so much impact on that end. So let me get this straight. The point is essentially that because defensive stats are difficult to quantify, we shouldn't give anyone credit? Now that's a crazy take. Listen, the year before Michael Jordan played for the Wizards, Washington had the worst defensive rating in the entire league. They were also the second worst defensive team in points allowed per game. Now the following season, before Jordan's injury occurred, the Wizards were the sixth best team in the entire league in points allowed per game. They were getting better as time went on as well. You know, I disagree with that statement. Like, one player can't really um, change the defense that much. I think so. I think they can. You know, one player with the right mindset and leading the team on the defensive end, that, that would change it up, you know. Mike out there yelled at these young dudes, you better lock him up, you know, things like that. This is the mindset you, you the mindset Mike approached it with. 
it probably changes their mindset, things like that too, you know? In the last 35 games leading up to the injury, the Wizards were allowing the third fewest points per game league-wide. In one offseason, they literally went from the worst defense in the entire league to one of the very best. As far as players go, Michael Jordan was the only major acquisition in the offseason. Outside of Michael Jordan, the only other acquisitions the Wizards made in that offseason were five bench players. They were Tyron Liu, who averaged 20 minutes per game, rookie Kwame Brown played 14, rookie Brendan Haywood played 13, rookie Eton Thomas played 13, so and rookie Bobby Brooks. Simmons played 11. Now so if you ask me, Brooks. the biggest reason why the Wizards went from the worst defensive team to one of the best was because of two people specifically, Michael Jordan, who was the leader of the team, and Doug Collins, who was a fantastic basketball mm. head coach. Jordan is one of the most proven defensive players in the history of basketball, and he was known to be a hard-nosed leader who demanded 100% effort from his team, which is arguably the most important quality of a good defensive squad. If you're not giving the majority of the credit to Jordan and Collins for the improved defense, then who are you giving it to? Rookies who came off the bench and averaged less than 20 minutes a game? Giving Michael Jordan credit for that tremendously improved defense isn't irresponsible. It's quite logical, and completely refusing to do so just because, quote, defense is hard to quantify is completely asinine. I will say, when I'm looking at Jordan's first two seasons in Washington, and I call them underrated, I'm mostly impressed by the first two-thirds of the 01-02 season, which was before he tore his meniscus. That was a healthy, yet older Jordan, who showed that the sky was the limit with that Washington group. Now here's something else to consider. His indirect response video definitively calls Michael Jordan's wizard stint a failure, and I've heard many people in basketball circles make this claim. I gotta be honest, calling Michael Jordan's playing days in Washington a failure is an insanely harsh and hypocritical claim to make. We basketball fans don't say, man, what a failure Derrick Rose was in 2012. That team finished way below their expectations. If you said that, people would be like, What? And would quickly remind you that his season ended because he tore his ACL. So how can you possibly call that a failure? Man, wasn't Kevin Durant a failure in 2019? Again, his season ended early because of a torn Achilles tendon. So if those guys aren't called failures for injury-ruined seasons, then why don't we apply that same logic to Michael Jordan? who literally had his chance ruined like, due yeah, to a meniscus think, uh, tear. It's, it's, At the end of the day, see, me calling call MJ's Wizards seasons like, underrated is simply my way of control. saying that those years impressed me really? more than most people usually are. Obviously, if somebody wanted to tell me that his seasons in Washington were just as good as his seasons in Chicago, I would tell them that they're crazy and you're nah, overrated in MJ's when, years. That's what, yeah, that's when I think I think people call it a failure in comparison to what he did in Chicago. I think that's what it really is. People are just comparing to what he did in Chicago to what he did in Washington. I think that's what it really comes from, but it's not a failure. It's, it's just things in, in Washington. But if you can't person. understand how impressive right. it is that a 38-year-old player joining a lottery team and has them charging towards one of the greatest turnarounds in NBA history before an injury ruined it, then I don't know what to tell you. It's certainly not the main course of his GOAT-worthy resume. But if you don't consider that a nice little cherry on top for the argument, then you're simply not paying attention and appreciating the details. So what do you guys think? How would you describe Jordan's Wizards years in your own- Facts, let me know in the comments. Um, Me personally, man, from what I've seen so far, look like before the injury, Jordan was bugging. You know, he he was having his way with it. You know what I'm saying? After the injury, it slowed him down. He had to um get surgery, play 14 games on the injury. Dropped his numbers a whole bunch. You know what I'm saying? And then I think he played the uh, next season, right? He probably still got the effects of that injury. You know what I'm saying? 38, 39. I already know it was affecting him crazy. But I think, I think... I think they are uh his Washington years are underrated, bro. Just because people tend to 
compare it to the his Chicago years as if as if it's all about um it's all about uh championships, you know? Like I I understand the championship theory, but bro, you gotta look at the individual at some point in time. You know what I'm saying? This team wasn't a team that was gonna win a championship, so you can't compare it to his his three piece and things like that. It just doesn't it doesn't make sense, man. But if y'all enjoyed, share the video, like the video, click on the last reaction, and I'm out of here, man.